Hello world, welcome to this video on implementing the shape hierarchy. This one's a pretty complicated one, but we're going to get through it together. So brace yourself for a wild ride. So this is the problem. Implement the shape hierarchy, create abstract class, and a bunch of subclasses that implement. Uh, the shapes have methods. They inherit some methods. They provide their own instance variables. And then we have to create a driver class to test the shape hierarchy. So we're going to start at the end so you can see what our result should look like. So there's six things that could happen. There's three two-dimensional shapes and three one-dimensional shapes. And we're going to provide for each of those options. The first thing is enter a two- or three-dimensional shape. Two, so we're going to do, first we're going to do the circle, and then it's going to ask for the radius. It's going to return the area and the perimeter. Let's try again. We're going to enter a two-dimensional shape with a square and the same perimeter, sure, or the same side of the square will give us area and perimeter. Let's do it again. Two-dimensional shape. This time it'll be a triangle. It's going to ask for the side of a triangle three, a second side, and a third side, because a triangle, to get the area and the perimeter, you need to know all three sides. And that'll return the area and perimeter. And that's it for the two-dimensional shapes. Let's do the three-dimensional shapes. So instead here we're going to enter two, and then we have sphere, cube, and tetrahedron. Sphere is going to require a radius. It'll return the surface area and the volume for the three-dimensional shapes for each of them. Let's try three-dimensional cube. Enter side of cube. It's going to return the surface area and the volume. And the last one is the tetrahedron. The side will be two. It's a regular tetrahedron, so it only requires the one side because all sides are the same in this case at least. So there's the surface area and the volume. So that is the end result of what we want. Let's return to the question. Implement the shape hierarchy, an ab abstract class called shape. Let's get rid of the driver shape. We're definitely not going to get to that in this video, or the driver class. So let's see. We have a shape hierarchy. So an ab abstract class shape, which will be a parent class to two-dimensional shape and three-dimensional shape. The classes circle, square, and triangle will inherit from two-dimensional shape individually, so one, two, three, and sphere, cube, and tetrahedron will inherit from three-dimensional shape. Each two-dimensional shape should have the methods get area and get perimeter. This is going to be the cool thing that will allow, one of the cool things that will allow, we'll put it in two-dimensional shape, but each of these will inherit it, so we won't have to we won't have to define it each time. Actually, we'll, we'll have to adjust it because the area will be different, but we're going to set the standard in two-dimensional shape. And, and get area and get volume will be for three-dimensional shape. Every class, member, member variables will be different depending on all of these will have their own member variables, though most of them, I think all except for the triangle, is only going to have one. The circle will have the radius, the square will have the side, the triangle will have three sides, the sphere will have the radius, the cube will have the side, and the tetrahedron will have a side. But we'll have to define those individually. Triangle class should have three. Tetrahedron is a regular tetrahedron, so it should only have one. So this is the basic structure that we're going to look for. 
the shape which is going to inherit from object because it's an object. So shape will inherit from object, two-dimensional shape will inherit from shape, three-dimension from shape. These will inherit from two, these will inherit from three, and then we'll create a driver class. But we'll get to that in a later video, so let's get started on creating some creating some classes. So it's an abstract class, which means we can't actually make an object of the class. It just uh, provides a framework for things to extend it from. So actually this shape doesn't provide anything because everything is provided in the either two or three dimensional class. There's nothing that they actually share, um, but it's the parent to both. So that's abstract class shape, it's really nothing. But it will be the parent to both the two-dimensional shape and three-dimensional shape. And this extends shape. And this we're going to have some stuff in. Now, the two-dimensional shape, they all have a perimeter. And here we're going to return, it's a double, is how, how we want it. We're going to return 0.0, .0 because in this abstract form, we don't define anything, but we need to return something, so we're just going to return 0. We're going to change that be for each individual one, but we need to define it for the sake of our uh, two-string method. I don't think I mentioned the two-string. We have to provide a, a readout of the area and the perimeter. And that's the exciting part of the two-dimensional shape, because this this thing that I'm going to do here will be inherited by each of the three classes below it. So we won't have to redefine. Since each of the two-dimensional shapes we want to print out the perimeter and the area, we can put this in the parent class two-dimensional shape, and it will inherit and be accessed by the children classes or the subclasses. And the way we'll do that is string.format area percent we want it two digit two digit double new line perimeter and also a two digit two digit double that's how we want it to be outputted and then what we're going to call is the area the things that we define here, though, we'll subdefine these, but we need to, that's why we need to have them defined as something in this parent class, even though we'll never use it in this abstract class. So we're going to use this method, but we'll be redefining these, these methods. And that is our two-dimensional class, our abstract class. Hopefully it will make more sense as we define our actual classes. We'll do the three two-dimensional classes now. So circle extends two-dimensional shape. It has a double R, which is the radius. We need to define a constructor method, so when we create a circle, we're going to pass it a double R, a radius, and that's going to be, that double that we just made there is going to be set equal to it. Now we need to define the area. I'm going to pause for a second, and I'm going to switch over because we're going to need to know how to get the area and perimeter of each of the two-dimensional shapes. We're going to need to know how to get the surface area and volume of the three-dimensional shapes. And I made a chart, so we're going to look at that before we proceed. So the two-dimensional shapes are circle, square, and triangle. The perimeter is 2 pi r for circle, pi r squared for area, 
for square, it's just four times the side for the perimeter or the one side squared for the area. For the triangle, you just sum up the sides. And for the area, it's like Heron's formula, it's called. If you take half of the perimeter, call that S, the, the, the area will be the square root of that times that minus the first side times that minus the second times that minus the third side. That's the area of a triangle when you know the length of the three sides. For the surface area and volumes of the three-dimensional shapes, we have the sphere is 4 pi r squared. The volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. The cube surface area is 6 times the side squared. The volume is just the side cubed. Surface area of a tetrahedron is the square root of 3 times the side squared. The volume is the side cubed divided by 6 times the square root of 2. And I googled all these. You can do that if you want. Or you can just look off of this. But that is going, that's our chart that we're going to be defining all of our, our get whatever, our get uh, area, perimeter, surface area, volume functions. So, proceeding. Double area will return I think this will work, math.pi. I don't think I need to import it, and the pi is both capital, if I recall. What I did was 3.141592, but I'm going to try it this way. If it doesn't work, I'll switch it back. Math.pi times it's this pi r squared, this dot r. I think you can do a power function somehow, but I didn't. I just did times itself. Public double perimeter for the circle. Return math dot pi times two times this dot r. And that's it for the circle. Now we're going to do square. Class square extends two dimensional. And take a second and notice that. There is no defined two string class here because it's inherited, and we're going to keep this as it is. The area and perimeter have been overwritten by these functions. However, we're going to keep this as it stands. So that's really the the point of this exercise is to see that you can define methods in parent classes and use them in subclasses while overriding other functions. All right, the square. What does the square have? It has a side. Private side. Private double side. Now it has a method, a uh, constructor method public square, you pass it aside, and you set the side equal to that. The area, I think the square area is pretty easy, return this dot side times this dot side. The perimeter of a square is just the side times 4. And we're running out of time here, so I'll see you in a second.